Shalom, Mosan Christ Bless. My name is Captain Gideon and I have uh, Officer Emil with me. Uh, you're watching 15 Minutes with the Captains. Uh, today's topic is tithe. Are we supposed to steal tithe? Because you go to the Christian church, they pass the bucket and they demand that you put 10%. Some church even um, asks for, uh, what you call it, your uh, W-2s. Um, and you got to give 10% of your gross. So, we're going to go through the scriptures to see what the Bible say about that. Let's start with um, the most famous scriptures dealing with tithe and offering, Malachi 3. And uh, we're going to start at verse 8. The book of Malachi, chapter 3, verse 8. Will a man rob God? Yet he have robbed me. But ye say, wherein have we robbed thee? In tithes and offerings. So the pastors use this verse right here to do what? <clears throat> To confuse the people, to rob the people. They're standing in the church like, will a man rob God? So you start feeling guilty, like, damn, I, I don't want to rob God. You know what I'm saying? Nobody want to rob God. Even though we do a lot of evil things deep inside, people don't really want to do them. But they do it because why? They don't know any better. So they use that scripture to rob the people, using their emotion. Read on. Verse 9, ye are cursed with a curse, for ye have robbed me, even this whole nation. Mm-hmm. Bring ye all the tithes into the storehouses, that there may be meat in my house. And prove me now herewith, saith the Lord of hosts, if I will not open you the windows of heaven, and pour you out a blessing, that there shall not be room enough to receive it. So, they, they, they use that to collect tithe and to uh, spread their, uh, what you call it, the prosperity doctrine. Uh, and like, uh, you know, you are cursed with a curse, like, See, that's why you don't have anything, because you don't give your 10%. If you want blessing from the Lord, you got to give 10%. Well, here's the thing. That's not so. Okay? The scriptures say, bring you all the tithes in the storehouse. A storehouse is a place where you store food. That's why I said that there may be meat in my house. There was a reason why tithe was instituted. And as we go along, you're going to see why tithe was instituted. So bring you all the tithes in my storehouse, that there may be meat in my house. And then when you do these things, Moses said, I'm going to open the windows of heaven. Open the windows of heaven. Last time the Moses I opened the windows of heaven, one of the time I should say, was for the flood. When the windows of heaven is open, then rain comes down. So if you bring food in the storehouses, then God is going to allow the rain to fall on what? On your crops. Because you're giving the 10%, as you're going to see further down, it's never money. All right, let's read on. And I will rebuke the devourer for your sakes, and he shall not destroy the fruits of your ground. Neither shall your vine cast her, cast her fruit before the time in the field. So, so you see the blessing? If we bring the tithe in the storehouse so that there may be meat, there may be food in the Lord's house, he's going to open the windows of heaven. So rain is going to fall down. Then he's going to rebuke the devourer. What, what, what's the devourer? What devours crops? Caterpillars? The canker worm, locust. So Mosai is going to rebuke these uh, animals. And guess what? Because if there's no locust, no canker worm devouring your crops and you're getting good rain, the blessing is what? Your crops is going to flourish. Why the Mosai allow that blessing to come down? Because if we tithe. So what is tithing exactly? Let's go back into the law. Um, notice something. Uh, church is talking about don't read the Old Testament. The Old Testament is done away with. But why, when it comes to tithing, they're quick to go to that scripture? You got to ask yourself that question. After you say the Old Testament is done away with, we have to stay in the new. So why are you reading this to your members to collect money? So since you want to stay in the Old Testament, let's stay in the Old Testament. Let's see what the law actually says about tithing. Let's go to Deuteronomy. Book of Deuteronomy chapter 14. Uh, verse, uh, one second, 14. Ooh, doo, 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 doo. Let's start at verse 22. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 14, verse 22. Thou shalt truly tithe all the increase of thy seed. Thou shalt truly tithe what? All the increase of thy seed. Thou shalt truly tithe all the increase of what? Of thy seed. Of thy seed. Tithe the increase of thy seed. You plant seed, seed, 
seeds grow trees and trees bear fruits and you tithe you give 10 percent of those things that's why you say bring it into the storehouse a storehouse is used to store what food okay read it from the top thou shalt truly tithe all the increase of thy seed that the field bringeth forth year by year so every year you cultivate your crop and as you cultivate your crop you plant your water then reaping season come you reap your fruit and 10 percent of it goes to what as tithing read and thou shalt eat before the lord thy god thou shalt do what and thou shalt eat before the lord thy god no you you give all of it to 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 to, to, to the priest and thou shalt eat before the lord thy god you're gonna eat your uh your tithing before the lord thy god read in the place which he shall choose to place his name there the tithes of thy corn, of thy wine, and of thine oil, and the firstlings of thy herds, and of thy flocks, that thou mayest learn to fear the Lord thy God always. I think you're reading it wrong. It says money, no? And thou shalt eat before the Lord thy God in the place which he shall choose to place his name there, the tithe of thy corn. The tithe of thy corn, the corn that you reap at the end of the year, you're going to take that and bring it as tithing, corn. So if your pastor asks you for money, give him some letters. Read. Of thy wine. Of thy what? Of thy wine. You see, you need your grape. Remember in Malachi, it said, we will not cast out, cast out your, uh, your, your, your vine shall, will, shall not cast out their fruits early. So that blessing is going to allow you to have what? Grapes. And with grapes, with the blood of grapes, you make what? Wine. Okay? You're going to bring that to the most high. Read. And of thine oil. And of thy oil. You need olive oil, good olive oil, so the olive tree is going to flourish nice and, you know, nice and, and, and green. And they're going to produce olives, and you're going to use the olives to make the oil. And then because you're blessed, you're going to bring 10% of that to the Lord. Read. And the firstling of thy herds and of thy flocks. So the firstling, that first male without blemish, like the scripture says, you bring that to the most high God. Okay? Read. That thou may have learned to fear the Lord thy God always. Read. And if the way be too long for thee. Because some people might be like, no, well, you know, back in the days, there was no money. It was a bother, um, bother system. Like, you know, you trade and everything. Uh, we, we'll see. Because a lot of us said there was no money back then, so that's why they give money now. Because, you know, we're not cultivating the land no more. You know, we work in a nine to five, so we got to give our money. No, let's read, the, let's read the Bible. And if the way be too long for thee, so that thou art not able to carry it, or if the place be too far from thee. Be before you even go into that, because it's going to be a shocker for them. How the hell are you talking about there's no, there was no money? When the scribe and Pharisees who used to sacrifice, right? Who used to do this, keep the law of tithing, which was always animal and food. You try to trap Christ talking about, should we pay tax? What do you pay tax with? Money. And what did Christ say? Whose picture is on the coin? They say Caesar. He said, render unto Caesar what is Caesar. So money was always there. You're just trying to make an excuse to keep collecting that bread. Why? Because pastor got to push that nice Ferrari. It's not, they don't care about you. Because if they care about you, they will be teaching it to you as it is written. All right? Read it again from the top. And if the way be too long for thee, so thou art not able to carry it, or if the place be too far from thee, which the Lord thy God shall choose to set his name there, when the Lord thy God hath blessed thee, then shalt thou turn it into money. So, hold up. If the place is too far from you, like you read about the Ethiopian eunuch, traveling from all the way from Ethiopia, because three times a year all male were supposed to present themselves in Israel, to, to Jerusalem. So, when you read the Ram in 1616. So, imagine that Ethiopian eunuch, traveling from far. He can't bring all these animals, all this crop with him from far. You follow? So what he's supposed to do in Ethiopia, while he's in Ethiopia, he's supposed to sell all these stuff and take the money. Read. Verse 25. Then shalt thou turn it into money and bind up the money in thine hand and shalt go unto the place which the Lord thy God shall choose. And thou shalt bestow the money for whatsoever thy soul lustest after. No, you got to give that money to the high priest. And thou shalt bestow that money for whatsoever thy soul lusts after. Let's see what exactly you're supposed to do with that money. When it says, uh, we shall bestow that money for whatsoever thy soul lusted after. Let's see what you're supposed to do with it. Read. 
For yeah. oxen. For what? For oxen. Mm -hmm. Or for sheep. For oxen or for sheep. That's the first thing. You got to buy male with no blemish. You got to buy those animals back. Basically the same thing you just sold to come to come on the journey. Because it's easier to travel with $1,000 in your pocket than to travel with $1,000 worth of oil, corn, uh, corn, uh, herd. You follow? It's a long journey. So when you get there now, you buy, you buy those things again. Read. Or for wine. Or for what? Or for wine. Uh-huh. Or for strong drink. Wow. Read. Or for whatsoever thy soul desireth. And what do you do there? And thou shalt eat there before the Lord thy God. Thou shalt do what? And thou shalt eat there before the Lord thy God. Thou shalt eat there before the Lord thine God. You eat your sacrifice. Okay? That's what you do. Read. And thou shalt rejoice thou and thine household. And the Levite that is within thy gates, thou shalt not forsake him, for he hath no part nor inheritance with thee. So the Levites, we weren't supposed to forsake them. This is where the 10% come into place. Of all the crops, the oil, the, the wine we brought, 10% was for the Levite. That's why it says, bring ye the tithe in the storehouse. Because the Levites had to sacrifice for the people from sunup all the way to sundown. They didn't have the time to go get any other job. They make sure that there was food in the storehouse so that way the people can eat. The priests can eat. But when you go throughout the New Testament, you will find something that Christ had a job. Paul tells you if a man does not work, he does not eat. There's nothing going on in your church that you have no time whatsoever to get a job. No. You are a con artist that read the scriptures and figure, you know what? I could get rich and get away with this instead of selling drugs. So you're using the Bible to con the people. Tithing had to do with sacrifice. So let's go to Hebrews. The book of Hebrews, chapter 10. Let's see if the law of sacrifice is still in effect. Because if we couldn't find in the Bible that the law of sacrifice is still in effect, then you can give your 10%. But still, it wouldn't be money. It would be food, animals, to do what? Sacrifice. Well, the Levitical priesthood is no longer there. The temple is no longer there. Your pastor cannot do no sacrifice. That's why he tells you bring money. He's robbing you. So let's see what the Bible says. Hebrews chapter 10, verse, start at verse 4. The book of Hebrews chapter 10, verse 4. For it is not possible that the blood of bulls and of goats should take away sins. Wherefore, when he cometh into the world, he saith, Sacrifice and offering thou wouldest not, but a, a body hast thou prepared me. So, in the book of Hebrews, it is written, those sacrifices we used to do was not really able to take away sin. So when Christ came, Christ came as the living sacrifice to replace the law of sacrifice. Tithing falls under what? The law of sacrifice. So keep reading. In burnt offerings and sacrifices for sin, thou hast had no pleasure. So God says, I don't have any pleasure anymore in sacrifices. I don't have any more pleasure in sacrifices. Tithing for under the law of sacrifice. So don't get fooled by any pastor that tells you you have to pay 10%. That pastor is robbing you blind. So it's best that you pay attention to what we are bringing out, out of the Bible to show you tithing was never about 10% uh, of your paycheck. It was always about crops and, and firstling, which deals with the law of sacrifice. Now in the New Testament, Christ, when he died, he became the living sacrifice. And on that cross, the law of sacrifice was abolished, which means no more tithing. I'm going to say it again, which means no more tithing. With that, we're going to say shalom, and I hope that you got something out of it. Shalom, most sign Christ blessed.
make it so hard to serve God And why when I say that I'm a Jew with sound art For years I've been walking around saying that I'm a black man I ain't saying that no more, it's sound man This is Bishop Nathaniel of Israel United in Christ Please subscribe to our YouTube channels Stay up to date with our latest events, music, and classroom lessons. IUIC plans to continue visiting different countries where this gospel has not been preached before. IUIC needs your help in pushing this truth. So join us. Subscribe to our Instagram. Facebook, Twitter, and podcasts, and stay up to date with us. For more information, please visit www.israelunite.org.